Bible prophecy warns of a flesh man coming on the scene with supernatural powers that he got from the devil. Well, he will use these supernatural powers to do miracles in the sight of men, and these miracles he will use to fool the entire world into thinking that he's God or Jesus Christ or try to replace Christ. Let me tell you about the mark of the beast and the Antichrist real quick. The Antichrist is going to be somebody that's going to be a hundred times worse than Hitler. But when he starts out, he's going to be a beautiful speaker, uh, mesmerizing in appearance, and a man of peace. That's how he's going to present himself. And he's going to unite all the world's religions under him. And he's going to pretty much form a religious dictatorship that will kill anybody that doesn't bow down to him. First on his list will be to kill Christians, to take the place of Jesus Christ, and to claim that he's God. He's going to sit in the temple over in Jerusalem and pretend to be God. Well, his system is going to be financial, economic, and all that. And you won't, be, you won't be able to be a part of that system unless you take an oath to him and reject all your former faiths like Christianity and whatever else you believed in. And if you ain't willing to do that, they'll threaten your family and threaten your kids and threaten your mom to kill them first in front of you and then kill you. But if you're a Christian, you know that you got to stick with Christ no matter what, even if it means death, because Christ died for us. He gave us his all, you know, just so we can have a chance to live with him in heaven. So this uh, Mark of the Beast and Antichrist, it has teeth behind it because in 1991, these laws were introduced to the U.S. from the Sanhedrin called the Noahide Laws, and it's seven of them. But as you go deeper into these Noahide Laws, one of the tenets is... If you will not renounce Jesus Christ, the penalty is death because worshiping Jesus Christ to the Sanhedrin and the Noahide laws is considered idolatry. And so they'll murder you. These, the Sanhedrin is the same guys back in the Bible days that conspired against and murdered Jesus because they were jealous of Jesus because Jesus was like an innovator. You know, where it was all about that religion and exploiting people, but Jesus Christ came with the true faith, which was a family family based doctrine where you have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and Jesus Christ is the Son. He's our Redeemer, He's our Healer, He's our everything. And He came to earth from heaven to show us how to do it. And the difference between him and all these other false gods is Jesus Christ is the only God that said he wasn't too good to die for his service. So he left his throne in heaven and came down here and died, took our penalty on the cross because we were sinners and we were worthy of whatever punishment we were supposed to get by the bad things we've done. But Christ said, you know what, Father, I'll take their punishment for them. And if they follow me, I'll, I'll lead them to heaven. So leave them in my hands so Christ is like our lawyer our defender our everything because Satan all he does is accuse us of all, accuse us of all the bad things we do he's like hey God look at what they're doing they're just like me so I get to take them into hell but Christ said hey if they follow me my blood is on them so they're mine and I can take them with me to heaven so that's what the deal is with Jesus Christ and this mark of the beast and Antichrist system this Antichrist figure he's gonna have supernatural powers and all that he's gonna have everything that he needs from the devil to fool mankind but just know if you as a Christian you can't go along with him just to save your life or to eat or anything like that because if you do God will reject you and you won't be able to go to heaven so you have to hold on no matter how hard it gets so it's letting everybody know about the Antichrist and the beast system alright guys make the right choice God bless you and I love you I'm going to read from the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 7. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write these things, said he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth and no man openeth. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it, for thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, 
I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Okay, I'm reading from 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and this relates to the Antichrist topic. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivable and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie. And that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. Wherefore, whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast, hold the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word or our epistle. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which hath loved us and have given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. Coming out on the field, and that last drive, it was all about the ground game, ground and pound. And I don't care how we're playing the game these days, offensive linemen still want to fire out and smack the guy opposite them and move the football on the ground. They feel better about that. That's what they want to do. That's how they want to play, and that's how they got it done. Yeah, they got it for a touchdown last drive. Let's see what happens here. And the Cowboys pressure gets there this time for the sack. Jalen Smith. He's the one that got to him. He takes him down for a loss of nine. And they need to work to at least get some of this yardage back after the sack. Second and 19. Gun, gun, gun. Go. From the gun, it's Ryan. This one complete to Mohamed Sanu. And they'll get it all the way up about five yards shy of midfield. Alongside Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon, it's the Falcons in possession to begin quarter number two, and they've got it here with a first down. Now Ryan going to give it. 
it to Freeman. And he got blown up. Losing yardage on the play back at the 44. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Now Ryan on second down. And Jones has it over the middle. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. He had the touchdown on the opening drive. Now he's got a first down. So from the 36 now, first and 10. This is Freeman on first and 10. Gave a glimpse of his power that time. And then brought down at the 30. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Enough takes to start to have a good drive. Quite like a big loss on a sack, does it? No, now they're looking at a third and long, and suddenly the momentum shifted to the other side of the football. And old Mo is a very, very fickle man. Third and long, it's Ryan. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. You can tell they were hoping for a flag there offensively. Several on the sideline motioning. Hey, why not a penalty? Why not a penalty? I, what did you see? Yeah, I think you've got to let them play. And the officials are instructed, if there's contact coming from both sides, no flag. Let them fight it out. And forces fourth down. Fourth down. Here's Ryan. And that is going to be incomplete. Dan Quinn's guys unable to come through there on fourth down. And the Cowboys defense is going to get them the football back. Now the Cowboys offense heads back onto the field. And last time the formula was pretty simple. One play drive, long pass. That Maybe they just want to do that again, right? And that's exactly how you want to draw things up. Whether it's on your grease board, right, in your playbook. One play drives exactly what you want on offense. What they have to be careful of is not having a letdown. It was yeah. real easy last time. They can't expect that going forward. Yeah, we'll see if it's that easy here. Here we go, 46, 46. And now with the play clock winding down, Jason Garrett opts to take a timeout. They'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this second quarter. So Prescott and the Cowboys now with a first and 10 good, good, good. at the 40. of about eight. I know there'll be a little bit of criticism there because they went right back to the air after the huge pickup and end up getting sacked. That's go, go, go. often a play that you make. You feel like you've got momentum on your side. Unfortunately, the O-line failed to hold up to try to keep that momentum going. On the crossing route, he hits his man, Amari Cooper. Touchdown, Cowboys! Two first-half touchdown passes now for Dak Prescott. And the Cowboys are able to show off their quick strike ability. As a former DB, you might not like to see that, but from a wide receiver's perspective, those are the plays they dream of. Correct on both counts, <laughs> all right? Because once he took off, I mean, let's face it, that should have been done in big sky country. Are there any speed limits out there? And off he went. Glad I wasn't the one trying to chase him. Extra point right down the middle. And that makes the score 14 to 7. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. But when the highlight is shown of this play, all 
attention is going to be on the person running with the football, but how about the group as a whole setting up that big time return? Yardage that we won't even account for in the box score may help them win the game. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Now a play fake here on first down. Looking deep downfield. So they took a shot on first down but couldn't connect. They're going for a receiver there. Already has one touchdown of this first half. A second one not to be. I like where their headspace is, though. I mean, I really like the thought process, right? You got a guy who's already scored one, right? You want to go back to him, continue the hot hand, and make them adjust to you defensively. I like what they were trying to get done, even though they weren't successful. Second and ten. It's Ryan again. And he will find Ridley on the left side. And they will eventually get him down, but he's inside the five all the way to the three. A minute 57 to go in this first half. We're back to Arlington right after this timeout. A chance now to get even before the break as they come up first and goal. From the shotgun, Ryan. Flushed out right. And this is going to be intercepted. Picked off by Jordan Lewis. And a big turnover there. As